Hello everyone, my name is John Brooks. I believe I have an important message for anyone who either owns a laptop computer or knows someone who owns a laptop. I guess that includes just about everybody. In November 2010, after months of trying to figure out why I was experiencing an ever-increasing pain and decreasing stream when I urinated, my urologist discovered multiple cancerous tumors in my bladder. As a matter of fact, more than six cancerous tumors were found, including a tumor invading the bladder wall, rendering removal of the cancer impossible unless the bladder itself was removed. At that same time, I was also experiencing a stomach ache that was becoming more and more persistent. In April of 2011, a PET scan detected and a pathology report confirmed that I also had stomach cancer. With this last medical diagnosis, my suspicions that EMF radiation from my laptop computer was responsible for my contracting multiple cancers were confirmed. Either of these cancers portends a very short-term survival rate. A simultaneous combination of these cancers leaves an even bleaker prognosis. Doctors advised me to have my bladder removed by radical cystectomy. It is considered standard treatment for bladder cancer that has invaded the bladder wall. Radical cystectomy includes the removal of the bladder, pair of vesicle tissues, prostate, and seminal vesicles in men, combined with chemotherapy and radiation. This procedure necessitates a need for an external urinary appliance and results in loss of sexual function. The penis becomes a useless appendage. Stomach cancer treatment includes partial removal of the stomach, chemotherapy, and radiation, and possible insertion of a feeding tube as the cancer progresses. Given the bleak prognosis, I have opted for alternative treatments to date, with limited internal bladder surgeries, three as a matter of fact, and no chemo or radiation. So far, I've held my own for one year. Most men make plans for the months and years to come when they are in good health, as I was before the onset of these cancers. Currently, I make only very short-term plans, no longer than one month out. I live under a virtual sword of Democles, fearing that it is not a matter of if, but when, will my health begin its downward spiral of ever-increasing pain and failing health. As of this date, there has been no cause of action filed, and therefore there are no named defendants. I wrote both the computer manufacturer and the chain store retailer CEOs and detail the medical history of my cancers and the evidence, much as we will do here. The chain store retailer did not bother to respond. The manufacturer of the laptop computer did respond. Here is a copy of the letter of denial for my request for a dialogue written by legal counsel of the manufacturer of the laptop. Defendant names have been redacted for temporary protection of the guilty. It states in pertinent part, Our computers are designed and manufactured in strict compliance with all governmental regulations and in adherence to the highest standards of design and performance. I can say that there is no credible study or evidence regarding a causal relationship between cancer and EMFs emitted by computers. I am afraid that a dialogue, as you request, would not be productive or helpful. Since the computer retailer does not need to even respond, and the laptop manufacturer does not believe a dialogue with me would be productive or helpful, perhaps a dialogue with the rest of the world will render a meaningful result. With that in mind, let's let the pretrial hearing begin. This presentation is produced as a preliminary pretrial hearing on whether or not EMF radiation from my laptop computer produced these two cancers. The evidence is overwhelming that it did. In California, the phrase preliminary hearing is usually reserved for criminal proceedings. This presentation is in a civil hearing format. However, in my humble opinion, the damage that a computer manufacturer knowingly lets occur without taking corrective action, like causing cancer as I am experiencing, is criminal. They might argue that they did not know, but the evidence will show that they should have known because I told them and sent them the evidence. Our evidence will be overwhelming to a criminal standard. 
that is beyond reasonable doubt, rather than a civil showing of a preponderance of the evidence. This preliminary hearing is called to order. Let it be noted for the record that plaintiff John Brooks is present. Unnamed defendants are not. However, defendant chain retailer is represented by no reply letter attached to an empty chair in front of a closed door. Defendant manufacturer is represented by redacted letter of denial of a request for a dialogue attached to an empty chair in front of a closed door. <laughs> Unnamed manufacturer defendants made three significant points in their defense. Number one, their computers are designed and manufactured in strict compliance with all governmental regulations and in adherence to the highest standards of design and performance. 2. There is no credible study regarding a causal relationship between cancer and EMFs emitted by computers. 3. There is no credible evidence regarding a causal relationship between cancer and EMFs emitted by computers. Plaintiff, do you have an opening statement? Yes, I do. In September 2007, I had knee replacement surgery on my right knee. Evidently, the surgeon had never heard of the old carpenter adage to measure twice and cut once, and as a result of his lack of care, the right leg after knee replacement was about an inch longer than the left. Also, the flex in the knee was at least 20 degrees less than required for a normal gait. Quiet in the hearing room, or I'll clear the room. <laughs> On second thought, it's only half full anyway. As a result of my abnormal walk, my arthritic back worsened to the point that I could no longer sit at a desk at work for even an hour without going into painful back spasms. At that time I ran an active real estate brokerage which required me to sit at a computer for most of the work day. In order to keep working I took my job home with a laptop computer and sat in a lazy boy type recliner. I placed my laptop on a TV tray type device to keep the laptop's warmth from reaching my body. The move home worked well as far as keeping up with my work. From April 2008 until bladder cancer was discovered in November 2010 I sat at my laptop for six or more hours per day, five or six days per week. I knew laptops emitted heat radiation and protected myself. However, I did not know that laptops emitted EMF radiation. After discovery of my several bladder cancers in November 2010, I began to research EMF radiation because I did not fit the profile for bladder cancer. I had not smoked for over 30 years. I have exercised regularly all my life. For the past 15 years, I have eaten primarily an organic whole foods diet. It is a vegetarian diet except for fish, eggs, and non-fat milk. I have supplemented regularly with vitamins and minerals for over 40 years. I have no family history of bladder cancer. I am not obese. I do not fit the profile for a typical stomach cancer patient either. In addition to the factors mentioned above related to bladder cancer, I had tested negatively for H. pylori bacteria infection, no family history of stomach cancer, never experienced gastroesophageal reflux disease, GERD. It simply doesn't add up that I would contract these two cancers simultaneously. Consider these facts. The approximate population of the United States in 2010 was 312 million. 500,000. Across the U.S. there were 69,250 new cases of bladder cancer. Therefore, the odds of someone contracting bladder cancer in the U.S. was 69,250 divided by 312,500,000 equals 
0.000216. Similarly, there were 16,900 cases of stomach cancer in 2010. The odds of contracting stomach cancer were therefore 16,900 divided by 312,500,000 equals 0 0.00005408. To calculate the odds of contracting simultaneous independent cancers, we multiply the two percentages, 0 0.000216 times 0 0.00005408 equals 0 0.00000. 11319. If we take this factor and multiply it times the population of the U.S., we arrive at the number of persons we would expect to contract these two cancers simultaneously. That number is 4. The odds of being struck by lightning in the U.S. is about one chance in a million. The odds of contracting simultaneous independent bladder stomach cancers is one chance in 78 million. Incredibly, you are therefore 78 times more likely to get struck by lightning than to contract these two cancers simultaneously. If one is 78 more times likely to get hit by lightning, than contracting these simultaneous cancers. Some factor, other than random chance, is obviously operating here. The root cause of my bladder cancer and stomach cancer have a common source, and my nutrition, physical activities, and family history are not suggestive of any contributing factors. On the contrary, when you factor in all the positive history mentioned prior, the odds of my contracting simultaneous bladder stomach cancers is reduced and approaches one chance in a billion. We are left with but one conclusion. Some external force was acting on both the stomach and bladder simultaneously. From the distance where I placed my laptop on the TV tray to my body at both the bladder and stomach levels measures about two to three inches. The only identifiable external source acting on both my stomach and bladder were electromagnetic fields, EMFs. EMFs are measured in milligauss. Many experts and public officials, as well as the few governments that have made an effort to offer public protection, have adopted the three milligauss cutoff as a consensus before a biological change occurs. Further, damage from EMF radiation increases with time and dose received, according to the international scientific consensus. With that knowledge in hand, I purchased a Trifield milligauss meter from Fry's Electronics. It accurately measures milligauss, and I began to measure emissions from my laptop computer at three inches in front and three inches below the laptop. The EMF measurements varies from approximately 15 milligauss to 50 milligauss, with spurts up to 100 milligauss near the keyboard. The first two measurements are 5 to 16 times the consensus level that DNA damage and other maladies begin to occur. Unaware of any aspect of EMF radiation at the time I was using my laptop, I spent on average six hours a day on that laptop, five or six days a week, for two and a half years prior to December 2010. Counsel for the Unnamed Defendants, I am living evidence of the dangers of EMF radiation from laptop computers. Your laptop caused my stomach and bladder cancers. We have been shown what caused my cancers. Now we will turn to how the EMF radiation acts to cause cancer. Here are some excerpts from the testimony of Professor Martin Blank, Professor of Physiology and Cellular Biophysics College of Physicians and Surgeons, Columbia University, submitted on behalf of respondents on the application of PATH Allegheny, Virginia. See footnote 1 for the URL address. In assessing the potential biological impact and risk of exposure, one would generally turn to the safety standards set by professional agencies such as ICNIRP and IEEE. However, 
the standards set by these agencies are unrelated to biological thresholds. They are based solely on the heating of tissue that results from the energy. The stress response at the cellular level has shown activation at very low levels and DNA single strand breaks in the extra low frequency range have shown that damage is possible. It is therefore possible for weak electromagnetic fields to cause electron movements in DNA that redistribute charges and trigger large molecular rearrangements like DNA splitting. Cancer is generally believed to result from DNA damage, mutations, and it is the ability of electromagnetic fields to cause DNA damage by various mechanisms. The 3 to 4 milligauss figure has been widely accepted as providing practical guidance for reasonable level of safety, but it does not indicate safety below that level of reactions. Professor Blank's credentials shown in the transcript of this testimony indicate that he is one of the foremost authorities on EMF radiation. He has 20 pages of background credits for his work in the EMF field. In my mind, he is a true hero of the past 30 years. It would be an honor to shake his hand someday. His YouTube presentation at the forum at the Commonwealth Club of California further enlightens us on the dangers of EMF radiation. You should take the time to view it. Well, there we have it. The evidence that electromagnetic field radiation caused my multiple cancers beyond any reasonable doubt. Biological changes can occur at the 3 milligauss level and I experienced 5 to 16 times that level for two and a half years. Unnamed defendants' negligent behavior have given me cancers that my doctors tell me that may end my life in tragic pain and indescribable ill health. But I'll be damned if you're going to radiate my grandchildren and other people's children without their knowledge of the danger. I purchased a smaller version of the same model laptop for my young granddaughter when she was in eighth grade. She stopped using it when I told her of my suspicions. But there are millions of other children and adults who are unknowingly using these radiation emitting devices and this video is designed to warn them before they too come down with cancer, infertility, or other debilitating disease. Unnamed defendants, you cannot hide behind a state-of-the-art defense. I have personally tested at least one model laptop computer that emits electromagnetic fields below the 3 milligauss thresholds at 2 to 3 inches from the device. To all persons viewing this video, I ask you to do several things. First of all, demand that computer manufacturers stop calling the devices laptops. This is false, misleading, dangerous, and malicious advertising. These computers should never be placed on your lap under any conditions. Put them on a table or work desk if milligauss are low, but not within inches of your body. Check out your computer with a trifuel meter or other device and make sure that the milligauss it is emitting is below the 3 milligauss level a few inches from the device. If it is above that level, write your manufacturer and retailer and demand that they repair it and bring it into a safety compliance level. Demand that retail outlets who market laptop computers measure and advise the milligauss output before they market them. A tri field meter or other device should be available for you to personally measure laptops before you purchase them. Finally, if you or a loved one has come down with bladder, stomach, or cervical cancer, or had a radical change in sexual drive, or other dramatic change in health while using a laptop computer, write to me. I need your help in accumulating additional evidence for an eventual day in court with unnamed defendants. Godspeed, and thanks for watching. If you wish to contact me confidentially, please email me at c o n f t o j-o-h-n at aol.com